Welcome back, Lisa. It's great to have you back here in the studio. Thank Can you. we first of all start with this year's Death Valley race? Can mm -hmm. you walk us through? Because it was hell and back, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Um, well, this was a second attempt after last year at the end of the, at the finish line. I said never again. <laughs> Famous last words, as they say. Um, when I came back and recovered, and I decided oh, I really want to have another go at this and, and try to improve. So I spent the whole year dedicating my training to getting a little bit faster, a little bit healthier and stronger um, and I decided to go back and um, of course in the recession it was a bit of a hard task to get sponsors on board but I um, got a lot of support from home so from Taranaki Engineering in particular um, they came on board and we got to go over and take a crew and this year's race was um, completely different uh, the temperatures were just uh, unbelievable. We had a 57 degrees was the highest temperature we were recorded on the road, um, and yeah, it was just it was a hard journey. So, hard. because uh, you had some trouble with energy gels, didn't you? Yeah, I often have digestion problems when I'm running because what a lot of runners do when you get to a certain fatigue your uh, level, your your body is using so much energy for your muscles it shuts it down the, the digestive processes so to get the energy through is quite a difficult task and um, I've been taking what I, what I ate last year which is like a complete food um, drink and but I tried to add gels to it this year that didn't agree with me at all and uh, they were okay for the first 10 hours and then I started vomiting and um, hitting the wall and blood sugar problems and so I spent the whole night, the first night, which is going up a pass, um, passing out, falling asleep, crashing, um, vomiting, yeah, you name it. And this is while you're trying to you're still trying sort to run. of run. Yeah, yeah, you're so still going. You've keep, got to keep moving forward so you can't stop and recover and, you know. Can, can you d d describe to me what it's like when, when this is happening, how you sort of have to, how do you dig down in yourself to survive? Well you've taken on this challenge, you've, you've got so many people supporting you and, and you've got so much reason to fight, you know, you've, um, you, you hope that these sort of things don't happen during a race and you're hoping for the, for the ideal situation and you're going to be feeling great but when that doesn't happen you have to have a contingency plan and usually they do come into play in ultra marathoning because it is extreme. Um, you're thinking about while you're doing this you, you're trying to talk yourself into keeping going. Your crew are supporting you and backing you the whole way. They know what you're going through and they know not to say to you, oh, don't you think you should stop or anything like that, you know, that's not the attitude out there, it's like, you keep going, you will keep going. Because they're in your face, aren't they? They're pushing, In, in bad pushing, water, pushing. it's definitely your yeah. crew are pushing you to keep keep moving because, on my orders, of, of course, um, I, no matter what, I'm going to get through. That's my attitude when I go into a race like this, so I'm prepared to go through whatever it takes to get there and sometimes that's um, an easy road and sometimes it's not. Um, this time was a particularly difficult one, but um, there were many other runners doing the same sort of things and having to overcome, but you come through that time and you come out the other side and next morning you're, well, not a box of bees, but you're, uh, <laughs> you, 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 you slowly come right and then you, things start to loosen up a little bit and you have a, a good time for another hour or two and then peps down again. So it's a bit of a life, it's a bit of life, life, you know, it's a good analogy for life, ups and downs. I think it's something that fascinates us all is um, why you do it and why do you keep doing it and what keeps you going? <laughs> well, it's, um, yeah, it's been a development process. You obviously don't go out one day and say, well, I'm going to run hundreds of kilometres. You, um, I get so much out of it. I know people concentrate on the negatives, perhaps on the pain involved, on the on discipline and, and, and the hardships that you go through, but there are a lot of positives that you get out of it. I mean, I've had the most interesting life, you know. The pain goes, but that, that feeling of, of satisfaction, that feeling of pride in yourself can never be taken away. It's something you've got forever. Because you kind of got into this in the first place. Your first boyfriend mm -hmm. was quite instrumental yeah. um, in that. Yes, and he was. You, yeah. you would ne you, Never had plans or dreams to do this, did you? you no, didn't you don't think grow up and think school. I'm going to be like an ultra marathon runner. No, <laughs> in fact, I mean I was a very sporty kid. I was into gymnastics and surfing, and um, you name it, I was into it outdoors all the time. But um, when I met my first serious boyfriend, um, he was um, an extreme 
athlete and an extreme person, and very, very talented and very, very tough. Because were you initially, the, ru the running you were doing was to kind of prove it to him that you could do it? Well, the running originally was to actually try to keep up with him so that I could be fit enough to, to do all the biking that we were doing and tramping and mountain climbing and that sort of so it was part of that. But when we did, because he was a very hard man to please, um, and uh, when, when we went our separate ways, I think I decided I wanted to keep doing adventurous things, but I didn't want to do them on my own. And I wanted to do it in a more controlled and positive environment, and that's what ultra marathon running offered me. So, I went and did that marathon de sables in Morocco for the first time, and that was a 240k race. And I met all these wonderful, like-minded people who were supportive at the same time, and I, I had the most incredible experience. I came at, out at the end of that week in the desert, thinking, "This is just fantastic. I want to do this again." Um, and so I turned those hard times, that boot camp if you like, that I'd been through into a positive and um, it had stood me in good stead for facing a few dramas along the way. <laughs> can, can, can you tell me a little bit about when you when the races are over and the the focus has been for such a long time to to get there, do it, you've done it and it's in a sense been hell and back. Yep but you've, had, you've got this tremendous sense of achievement and pride. But what's it like after? I mean, do you get really depressed? Really question. Yeah, it, um, like last year when I came back from Death Valley, I, I went into a really big slump for, for about 10, 12 days, and Mum will tell you, you know, she had to cook me chicken soup and pop me into bed and, you know, do all those nice things because you've been through this traumatic experience in a way, you've, and you've got so much um, information that you're trying to process, what you've been through, the, the countries you'd seen, the people you've met, and you have to sort of work through all those images, you know. And what do you do to relax? I mean, do you relax? Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the moment, life's chaotic, yeah, to be honest. It's just um, full on. I'm either working in the shop or planning my next big uh, project, which I'll mention in a minute, it's, um, or, or getting over the last training run or preparing and doing media work and learning, learning, learning. Um, so life's very busy and chaotic at the moment and, and very full. Yeah, because you've got a big run coming up in yes. the end of October, isn't it? I do. Through yeah. New Zealand. Tell me about that. I'm really, really excited about this project. It's um, completely different to what I've ever done. It's uh, running the length of the country from Bluff, uh, starting on the 31st of October. Uh, 2,200 kilometres in 33 days, um, so it's roughly 52 marathons, and I'll be doing 70 to 80 kilometres a day, so it's going to be pushing my limits to the absolute maximum. I've never done anything this long. I'm frightened, I'm scared, I'm scared of possible injuries, I'm scared of the pain that I'm going to have to go through to, to achieve this goal, but I've got a good reason for doing it, and that's to, um, I've got a twofold mission actually. One is to raise money for Canteen and Cure Kids, and the other reason is to try and encourage our kids to get out and get more active. We're running a program called the K A Day Challenge, um, people can go to our website and get, we're well, hoping that lots of teachers will get their kids involved. Um, it's a 14 day challenge where the kids go and do a kilometre each day. They learn to do exercise on a regular basis and hopefully get fundraising, um, get sponsored to do it. And the money goes to the charities and the kids can be involved in our interactive website and perhaps come and meet me on the road somewhere. Fantastic. Thanks for your time, Lisa. Thank you very much. It was lovely to be here.